Today I'm looking at this uh, contents of this box that Elacro sent me with, for review. It is supposed to be a STEM kit is what they called it. STEM being science, technology, engineering and math I believe. So let's see what they sent me in here. Oh goodies! Pen! 3D printed, no, laser cut logo, okay. Uh, notebook, okay. Here, here is the main event. It is the Crobot Bolt programmed educational robot car. What's in the box? It says there's a bolt car and a joystick in the box. Various different features, we'll get into that later. I just want to get in the box and see what this guy looks like. Documentation. Looks like some assembly instructions. That's good. Um, how to use the remote control. Ah, and a track because it, one of the things that it can do is line following. So it's got a sample of a line following track. Okay, let's get back to unboxing. We have oh, a whole bunch of things in here. Okay, uh, let me just dump these out and then I'll quickly go through them. So it's definitely a kit. I was a little bit uh, worried when I looked at the picture on the box, thinking it wouldn't be, but it's definitely a kit. And this looks like the main board. So on this side of the board, we have some pins to plug stuff into, some a couple of light sensors, IR receiver, obviously a couple of DC motors. That's pretty cool. A connector labeled battery. Um, handful of inductors over there and some six pin five pin devices i guess okay um, over this side the brains of the operation that is an esp32 oh very cool nice and powerful which means this thing has wi-fi and bluetooth i believe the esp32 has bluetooth as well okay and then we have a couple of push button switches an on off switch 16 pin chip down here which is a CH340 USB interface. No doubt for programming that guy. Okay. And on the other side, we have the USB. We have some RGB LEDs, a uh, little ball bearing wheel kind of thing, uh, a couple of analog, a couple of uh, in out ports. Um, got I squared C, a couple of uh, GPIOs, 5 volts and ground over there. And on the digital 5 volts ground and a couple more GPIOs. Okay, moving further along, another couple of power supply looking components. Uh, buzzer. Is there a buzzer on the other side? That's probably what that guy is. Okay, I thought it was an inductor, but it's probably a speaker thing. Cool. Then a couple of more connectors. One of them got damaged. Oh, those aren't connectors. Those are uh, reflective infrared uh, sensors. Okay, let me just see if I can straighten that one up because it obviously got beat up in shipping. There, that'll do. And then a couple more RGB LEDs on the corner. Essentially, it's a development board, but with motors on it, which no doubt connect to these wheels. So the other large anti-static bag has this, which looks like a remote control. We have a joystick. We have, what is that chip in the middle there? It's another ESP32. In addition to that, we have, like I said, the joystick, a D-pad here, a couple of shoulder switches on off, USB. Um, is this, yeah, it is another CH340. So this guy obviously can be user programmed as well. That's cool. Uh, we have some I squared C, 5 volt ground, and a couple of GPA over there. Another one of those little speakers. Um, I don't know what that is. Is that a rumble motor, maybe? That'd be cool. And on the back, uh, two triple A's. Right. There's a lot of power in this little kit. Now, let's see what else we have. We have an ultrasonic module. Very standard ultrasonic distance finding module. Except for this one is mounted in a cat face. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, clearly we have a standard little infrared remote back here. Okay. Uh, that seems reasonable enough. Uh, what else we got here? Some push button caps, right? Uh, some cables, 
standard USB cable. What is this? LCD or OLED or something similar. Okay. I assume that connects up via these to one of those IO ports on there. And then the other things that we've got looks like some laser cut acrylic for structural bits and pieces. That's the same shape as the remote control. Um, let's just, yeah, okay, that makes sense there. That goes over there, sure. Um, this one has a battery box in it and some more acrylic cut uh, stuff with the bolt logo on it. Right. So that goes with that guy, probably. More screws and standoffs and a few more acrylic pieces. This little lightning bolt motif shows up all over the place. Oh yeah, and there was a screwdriver in there too. Forgot about that. So that is all the bits and pieces we need to assemble it. So this is fairly clever how this thing goes together. The uh, tabs on the circuit board just go around those little slots. Cut into the acrylic. That little front piece tabs onto there. The battery box uh, has tabs in the side of it as well. Let me just make sure that switch is turned off. So that plugs in there and it's keyed so you can't get it wrong. That's good. And then this connects on here and this is the part where you probably want an extra pair of hands if it was a kid doing this and that is really who the target market for this thing is is for kids it is an education kit after all those all go on there and then this piece goes on on this side like i said this would be a lot easier with an extra pair of hands but as you can see it is possible for one fumbly old guy to do it by himself as well so there that's all snapped together now just the other two screws into these really long standoffs that are holding it together the only downside of this design that i can see is that when it comes time to replace the batteries you got to take the whole thing apart but realistically how long did that take me to put it back together that's not too bad there we go the body of that guy is done the only thing left is to put the ultrasonic sensor on the front here and it just plugs into its gpio position thunk there it is complete so the instruction sheet that comes with it doesn't show anything about putting the remote control together but it's fairly straightforward there's no fancy uh arrangements or anything it's just a matter of putting the standoffs in the places that there are holes for the standoffs and there's four holes on the front for the standoffs only two holes in the back by the looks of it four standoffs yeah pretty straightforward and that just drops down over there and it looks like the two outboard screws get mounted now and the other two hold the back piece on Oh, we got different lengths of screws going on here. So the bag says there should be two different lengths of M3 screws. However, to me, it looks like they are all the same length. Fortunately, I do have some M3 screws that are a little bit shorter. Certainly not the end of the world, but just something to look out for when you're building this. If this happens again, I have to assume that that was just an accident in the packing then it's not a habitual problem because they did have them labeled properly on the bags. There we go, got there in the end. On all, not too bad. I guess we should put the buttons on that though. Gotta have buttons on your joystick. Uh, do we have colors? Do we care about the colors? I suppose we could follow the colors that they use in the manual that I found on their website. So red on top, blue in the bottom. Ah. And those have to go on before. Okay, well, I'll just unscrew these and put that on there then. Fine, be like that. Oh, and also that LCD goes on the remote control. So I guess I should plug that in before I put the cover back on again. That looks like it just goes right there. Punk. Put that on and then 
reinsert these screws hopefully for the last time unless I've missed something else but I don't think so this time all right that's that and the last thing is these little white button caps on the two shoulder buttons toss the batteries into the back switch it on and see what happens hey cool it's got some graphics it's chirping Well, Bluetooth symbol and it's chirping, so I'm assuming that means it's trying to find this guy over Bluetooth. Cool. Well, we'll shut him off for now. And, well, let's, uh, I haven't programmed this thing. Let's see if it comes with any factory software on it. So the power switch is back there. His lights come on everywhere. Okay. Power this guy on. Let's see what happens. Oh, there's a little Bluetooth LED over here. Okay. We probably need to put software on something or other, I would expect. But let's just see if it responds to this. I probably should read the instructions, but I'm not going to. Is there a battery in this? Ah, there's no battery in it. So now let's try it. Now there's a battery in here. Uh, CR2025, just for reference. Uh, there is a little infrared sensor on there, so... Oh, it chirps when I do that? Hey! Okay. Cool. Oh, wow. Okay. Stop. Hmm, it's got programs in it and everything. And if I'd paid attention to this paperwork that came with it, I would have seen that it has some factory procedures. So, number one is just ultrasonic obstacle avoidance. Number two is line tracking. Number three is light chaser. Number four is music playing. That we can do. Oh, and zero is robot on patrol. And then five, six, seven, eight, we can customize. Cool. Buzzers, lights. Okay. Oh. I did not know that those came on like that. All right. That's buzzer, right? Uh, music playing robot, four. <laughs> and that does use the RGB LEDs in the bottom as well as there's RGB LEDs in there. Okay. I've never seen ultrasonic sensors that have LEDs on board. That is cool. Anyway, whatever. Don't need Christmas music quite yet. Soon, but not quite yet. Let's try line chaser mode. Okay, that works. That definitely works. Cool. Let's try this light uh, following mode. Okay, so off that corner, in that corner. Okay, so it sort of follows the corners. That's pretty cool. You got to be pretty close, though. And, of course, you can steer it around just with the remote control, forward and back. So that is all of the factory pre-programmed uh, things that it can do, which is pretty cool. But there's a lot more that you can do, and that's where the USB cable comes in because this is an ESP32 in there, so we can reprogram it if we want to. And the programming instructions, along with um, full, the full manual and a whole bunch of, uh, of experiments and lessons and stuff, is all available to download from the website where you purchase this thing from. The kit that I got, just for reference, is $57.80, including both the infrared and the joystick, and of course the robot car itself. But way down at the bottom of that page, there's all this downloadable stuff. There's a wiki, there's the assembly instructions, which we just followed. We have the beginner's guide, and we have the lesson code. And those are the two things that you'll want to download to actually play with this thing. So here is the 52-page manual that you can download from that link. And it really goes through a whole bunch of stuff. As you can see, I'll just slowly scroll through the contents here. So there are three different ways you can program this. You can use Let's Code software, which is their customized version of Scratch. 
If you haven't encountered it before, Scratch is a, something that MIT, yeah, that MIT put together as a young kid's beginning programming language. It's a graphical language. It's drag and drop. It is very slick. And my kids both played with it when they were younger as well. Without any help from me, they just started creating stuff in it. So it is quite intuitive to use for younger kids, and that's who it's designed for. There's a full set of instructions on how to download it. It is cross-platform Windows, Mac, and Pi. Now, I tried to install it on the ancient Pi 3B that I've got around here, and it installed, but it didn't want to run. And I don't think it's the software's problem because I couldn't get just plain vanilla scratch to run either on that ancient uh, Pi. So I'm not going to blame it on the software, but there's also Windows and Mac versions. However, I don't have either of those around here. So I'm going to go on to demonstrate a few different uh, options, one of which being using Arduino. And again, I could do that, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go with the third option, which is Python. MicroPython specifically, because this is an ESP32, it can run MicroPython. And since I've already got Thony installed on my computer, although they do have instructions linked from their webpage on how to install it yourself, uh, that is what I'm going to use. So according to that document, I need to go in Tools, Options, Interpreter, set that to ESP32, which makes sense. Select the port, install firmware, browse to our firmware, which is in, where did I put it? And this is all downloadable from that same website. Uh, all the different firmware that you need for running all the projects. Let's install that. And we can close that and OK that. Let's get some Python code. We just get lesson one and see what it does. So there's an activate script there. Let's send that one. Actually, we, we should be able to just run that, shouldn't we? Yes, it says hello master down there. Okay. And then I have to push a button. Oh, okay. It's that button in the corner. Well, that makes sense, I guess. So let's start running that. It says hello master. A little creepy, but whatever. We'll push that button and it says, there we go. It's activated. Woohoo. So we can load Python scripts on there. And scrolling down through the manual, this is what that let's code looks like. And that is the same uh, project that we just did. Uh, project in quotation marks. It's basically the uh, hello world of the thing. But that's what it looks like in let's code. We already saw what it looked like in Python, and here is what it looks like in Arduino code. And all three are available from the same zip download file from the website. Each lesson also comes with a challenge. And this is what the challenge looks like. Um, not quite sure why they call it a challenge, but it's a second lesson at the same level. Uh, this one uses delays or in Python sleeps. So after that, we could go through all 16 of the lessons. I'm not going to do that on here. They're all on the website if you want to look at them. Um, and in the manual, it shows the Let's Code examples. And of course, as I showed, there's also Arduino and MicroPython code available at the same download. Angry Bolt, what does that do? Oh, okay. It's uh, monitoring the ultrasonic. Let's do that one. So let's just start that one running on the bolt. Run that, okay. And it looks like we have to tap the program start button each time. And it is showing us the distance from my hand. That's cool. Oh. And notice the colors change as things get closer too. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Let's see what Color of Emotion does if we run that one instead. Whoa, where are you going? Okay, it tries to run away if you get close to it. It's making noise. <laughs> That's fun. So 
So this is a pretty cool little thing, actually. Come back this way. There we go. Um, it's, yeah, I like it. Um, and it's a powerful little guy, too, with the ESP32s in there. I'm going to have to look more into this guy because I didn't really spend enough time playing with it. It's an added option. Um, the basic kit just comes with these pieces here. And I think these what do they call them? Crowtail adapters for adding extra modules onto there. Uh, I will leave all the links down below. As I've said already, thanks for watching. Thanks to Elecro for sending this to me to play with. I will talk to you later.